everybody. We're so glad you joined us for another Lipedema channel interview. And today I am speaking with a woman who blew me away because I did a survey to talk to the Lipedema community. And I said, how are you managing your condition? And I heard all the regular things, you know, like certainly pneumatic compression and vibration plates and even essential oils. And then this survey wrote in under other distraction therapy. And I said, what? I got to find out more about this. So I connected with Kim Wilson, who is our guest today. Kim, we're so glad to have you here. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thank you for I, having me. It is my pleasure. We are definitely going to talk about distraction therapy, but I want to ask you about, you know, you wrote to me and said that since the age of four or five, you were dealing constantly with pain. My heart goes out to you. Can you walk us back to that point in time and what was it, what were you experiencing? Well, it's it's been quite a journey from that age. It's hard to kind of like condense it. Yeah. Um, but how it all started out was I, I've always been a really small child. Like I'm short and I'm always the shortest person in the room. But um, I used to, at night, just be in severe pain with my legs. So my dad used to rub them for hours just so I could go to sleep. Now, as a small child, I don't think you would give your small child a lot of medication for pain like that. You just think, oh, growing pains, growing pains. But it was just my entire family remembers me always laying on the couch, getting my legs rubbed for hours just so I could fall asleep. So I had a lot of pain there all my life. Wow, did they look different? It was just no. the pain? Very muscular though. I have very strong calves. And um, as the research is all coming out, there has to be something to do with that calf, the way the lymph fl flows through the calf, I think. But mm -hmm. at that time in my life, you know, as I grew older, you know, I did normal things. I was treated just like any other kid. I didn't do anything different until I was a little bit older in school when I had to get a little bit of PE excused because some of it was just too hard for me. But pretty much I just lived like everybody else did most of my life because I've been in pain. So I really don't know what it's like to kind of like live without it. It's just been a part of my life. So that's been more I do, the more I do, the more I hurt. It's as simple as that, really. Like if, if anybody understands the fibromyalgia spoon theory type of thing, you know, you only have so many spoons in a day and when they're used up, you're overloaded. And then that's, that's like flares or, you know, you turn into severe pain. I call it verberating at that point. So, so when I'm verberating, mm -hmm. Not good. Fibromyalgia was your very first diagnosis, correct? Yeah, and I didn't receive that diagnosis till about 1980. So all my life growing up, like it was just like I even did gymnastics. I'm very strong and, you know, very healthy type of kid, not a person who gets a lot of illnesses or anything. But there was always this pain and, oh, yeah, Kim's going to be whining tonight because she's been doing too much today and, you know, going and to PE classes, anything that involved exercise or movement too much created that type of problem. So it was just something that was every day. So it, it's actually not, I don't know, I guess it just doesn't stand out as much to me as it does with other people when they hear that. But I don't know any difference. So anything better is good. Well, I admire your strength and your resilience, and yet my heart really does go out to you. There are, Thank you. you know, when I began doing these interviews, it clearly, it became clear to me quickly that pain was the number one issue, followed soon after by mo mobility for yeah. the women with lipedema. But you still didn't get to a lipedema diagnosis for quite some time. In fact, Things got worse when you had your first child at age 19. And we often hear that there is a trigger, a hormonal trigger. So tell us what happened after your pregnancy. Well, what was going on is um, I don't have a lipedema diagnosis. I'm Durkheim's disease. And um, 
at my pregnancy, I was quite young. So I was like 19 years old. And um, my, I actually discovered that I was hypoglycemic first because I passed out when I was pregnant. And then I had my baby, I had trouble with weight gain. And so I gained 45 pounds with my first pregnancy. But after my pregnancy, I somehow had developed these lipomas on my SI joints. And so they became quite painful and troublesome. So after my pregnancy, shortly after my baby was born, I had some of these taken off my left SI joint. And my doctor just pretty much said, well, you got too fat. And that's just a fat cyst. And that's from being too fat. <laughs> that's kind of how it was explained to me at that point. And it was just my family doctor cut them out of my back. So they did it right in the office and just a bit of freezing. And then, so that's how I just went on about that. It was just, okay, we got too heavy and that happens and okay. So we carried on. But after that, um, things kind of went along for years. Like I've always struggled again. Like the, it was like the surrounding of fibromyalgia. And at that time, doctors are not, to open about fibromyalgia then either. So it's kind of like what I'm going through for my Durkham's and all this progression and knowledge and science and everything. I've already been through that turmoil for fibromyalgia all of my life. So I've been mistreated and not treated well by doctors almost all my life. And I've had a lot of medications being tried to like push medications, medications, medications when in fact, every single medication I've ever been put on, I have a problem with. But now I have an answer for that because I've been diagnosed by Dr. Herbst with mast cell activation syndrome, MCAS. So that explained that history back then now. So that's why I can't take prescription medication because I have mast cell activation syndrome. So most of the interviews I've done, and you know, you've seen them all, are focusing on lipedema. But this really yeah. is the first interview I'm doing that is focusing specifically on someone who has Durkham's and mast cell. If you were giving our audience a brief Reader's Digest version, how would you describe those conditions and what differentiates them from lipedema? Um, well... I don't have, first of all, the difference for me is I have lipomas versus uh, fatty fluid tissue. It's, my appearance is different. You pretty much don't really see that I have a condition other than I'm heavier, of course. And I have some weird swellings. Um, now I can actually show you a bit of difference if I sit still here. You see that I have a port wine birthmark Yes. Right mm -hmm. Okay. So that Dr. Herbst felt that the source of my lipomas and my Durkham's disease, she feels that it could be sourced from my port wine birthmark. So that was, yeah. that's a thing that's up in the air still, but that's another subject altogether. But I don't know if, he, if I hold still, can you see the difference between my arm here on the bottom as yes. the top? Yes. So I don't, I have all this diffuse swelling. And so that's like not much is getting through there because of that swelling. And I have a thicker arm than the other one, quite a difference. And yes. like sometimes you can see it better than others, but I have lipomas in deep inside. I have lipomas there all through here, but in here I have lipomas. I have like a three uh, pronged lipoma in my conjuncture, like right there. So it's in three parts. So I have like lipomas that grow like ganglion almost like tentacles and they grow in, in the middle of my arm elbow pit, they call this. And like, I have lumps in here. It's, it's see, it's hard to see, but when you push against them, you find them like the lumps. Wow. And so when you run your arm along my arm, it's like a little mountainous thing. It's like bump, 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 bump. And I have images of this lipoma that's a three prong. And I have an ultrasound that shows the mountainous range in my arm. So it's a pretty bizarre thing. Like I grow painful fatty lipomas all over my body. And Susan Morditelli, 
is also a Durkham's disease person. So we kind of, in this hotel room, compared our bodies. We went swimming and, you know, we just pretty much talked about Durkham's and our, you know, our knowledge and what we want to try and help. And because we're both advocates, she's in the States mm -hmm. and I'm in Canada. Yeah. But in Canada, we're so far behind. But as for my body problems, like lipedema, Dr. Hertz had said that it's possible that I have lip stage one, but it, she couldn't really determine that at that appointment because she diagnosed me with Durkham's uh, 2018 in January. Wow. And, and what is, how would you characterize mast cell? Mast cell, I, how I view it is I feel like I'm sensitive to so many things. I have sensory issues too. Um, noise, light, touch. Like you can't poke me or prod me almost anywhere because I think it's the Durkham's pain or the fibro pain. I can't really figure out which one is which sometimes. Mm -hmm. But also my mast cells, I can't take prescription medications. I'm almost like having a side effect to every single thing I use. Um, mast cell to me is like gut, sensitivity issues, um, rashes, itchiness, like I have severe itching, like I have to get utensils all the time because like I'll go crazy and as soon as I have any heat involved, I am like, it, it makes it worse, it's almost like your skin is biting you, it's so irritated and you can, it'll just feel like you got ants biting you everywhere because you get so itchy. I think it's from the histamine or something that like a reaction mm -hmm. and a lot, like I'll get weird. Like my one ear will just take off and go beet red, just one ear. <laughs> and you know, like I'll have like, what, what's wrong with you? You have this like red rash down your neck all of a sudden. So there's just one thing after another that I think it's just a major physical body uh, sensitivities to everything um from the environment like environment stuff i don't have any breathing issues per se but i don't know i guess i'm sensitive to so many things and like foods and i have ibs really serious ibs gut troubles but see that's a durkham's thing is you usually have gastro problems like ibs when you have durkham's disease too it's a gut thing like a lot of gut issues. So I think that's related to, to the mast cell, but mast cell is a huge complex condition, right? It's like really, really complex. So I haven't quite learned all I need to about mast cell. Just kind of moving into that research a bit more now with some other people that are putting out webinars. Well, I, first of all, admire you. I admire you. You can even laugh at certain things like your one ear turning beet red. Uh, and, you know, you got to have a sense of humor about these things. But the truth is, I, and I was crushed to see that in February of 2014, you were rendered permanently disabled. So that was four years before you got your diagnosis from Dr. Herbst? Yeah, I've been quite, I've been through a huge... Uh, journey just to get diagnosed. Over five years it took me to get diagnosed, but I diagnosed myself and then fought my way to Dr. Herbst and literally fought my way through the medical system here in Canada to be sent out of country. And they sent me down to her um, and they paid for her fee, but they didn't pay for anything for me to go there. So it really was an expensive endeavor on disability. But we did it, we found a way and I got there and I did get my labels, but a few more that I didn't expect was the, the MCAS. And I have been diagnosed with the hypermobile um, joint problem as well. So like, you know, having heads, the hypermobile EDS, like there's so much in my bucket that sometimes I don't know what it's coming from because I have spinal issues. I have fibromyalgia supposedly. I have Durkham's disease. I have severe neck arthritis. Like there's IBS. Like you could just like, 
it's it's time to take me out back and shoot me. No, so like, don't you oh, dare oh. say that. No, no, this, no, no, no. I'm just joking. Whoa. Now that's <laughs> dark joking. humor. You're that's a bit macabre because we always try to encourage and inspire in these interviews. <laughs> Oh, Kim, it's my goodness. It's a, it's a kind of a sideways joke, but I'm a Newfie by like um, my mother's Newfoundlanders and my dad's German. So I have a hot temper, but I have a quirky sense of humor. And it's sometimes like, I have to laugh or I will be crying in the corner. Amen. It's my way to cope, I guess. It, I, I find humor in it because it's like, well, what are you going to do? Really? What are you going to do? There's no cure. There's no, you know, there's just nothing you can do. You have to find a way to get through it. Okay. So then let's talk about the D word, your distraction therapy. You have the floor. I think okay. this is the first time I heard this was when you answered my survey. And I think everybody at home is quite interested to know what you've discovered. Well, I'm sure that there's probably like, I didn't invent this type of thing. Cause I guess it really goes along the path of more of a mindfulness practice. And due to my problems with getting proper care and help and even like understanding or openness to learn about the problems that I've been dealing with, the doctors are just completely unaware here and they're not open to much. So I've had to kind of like go in there and train and educate everybody in five minute spurts because you get five minutes for a regular appointment, 10 minutes for a long appointment. So I can't even describe what I'm going through in 10 minutes. So you can understand how hard it was for me to even get my case across to the doctors. So they, as soon as someone knows you have fibromyalgia, then you're, you're pretty much in the bucket over here. Oh yeah, she's one of those. So that's the first fight you'd have to get past, but then they can't deny the imaged lipomas and things like that. So, um, some of that has been quite the journey, but mm. I try not to dwell on the bad. I've just had a hell of a fight to get where I am today, but every inch of the way has made me either come across my heroes that I call Dr. Hurst was my one of my heroes one of my main heroes but along my journey I've managed to run into certain people like I might be off a little bit off track here so you might have to put me back on the gear because that tends to happen because I have anxiety too <laughs> see I have all these things well, you know, I've, I've I always been, think that you are absolutely delightful to speak with. And, well, you know, until you had raised your arm, I would not have known that there was anything other than this vibrant woman yeah. with a fascinating story. And I just want to encourage you that your sharing your story helps other people feel comfortable in their own bodies with their own condition and how to manage it. So I truly want to thank you for that. I, I appreciate that you understand because it, it's really difficult to even speak because then I, I fog out, I get the brain fog. That's another part of the problems, right? But I mean, the, just the way to get diagnosed took so long and I try not to talk about too much about the individual situations, because there was some pretty bad ones. But those I could have gone to like a medical board or something like that. But I've, I've kind of like just gotten past it and moved on to the positivity parts of it, and how much better I'm doing. So I want to talk about the people and the heroes in my journey, who got me here. So first was um, I was forced to see a psychiatrist because my doctor thought that I was bipolar and that I was a, um, I was causing my own problems. So he thought it was uh, mental illness. So I came in there looking for help for a shoulder problem, which ended up being calcium deposits at the end of the day, but he ignored it. And I was sent away to just stay in pain. And then eventually it was seen into, but I eventually got my care, 
got my procedure on my shoulder, and then I was under the path of trying to search, okay, who's going to help me here? So he was upset with me and forced me to go to a psychiatrist because of this bipolar. He says, I'm going to, you know, just have to send you to, to them to diagnose you. So I eventually let go. I tried to fight it because I know I'm not bipolar. Um, but people who are bipolar may not know it. So I did what I was told because I was on insurance from work and they were probably like suspecting a problem with me. So I felt forced. So I went to a psychiatrist and within 10 minutes, she knew I wasn't bipolar. She says, you're in chronic pain. You've been in chronic pain your whole life. You're, you have generalized anxiety disorder and a bit of OCD. So I have anxiety and things wrong, yeah. But anyone who's been in pain since they're four years old, she said, would be in the same situation. So she could see my lumps. She could feel my lumps. And she started ordering tests for me. So she was my very first hero because she believed me. That was the thing. So then we started getting results from tests. We started seeing images of my lipomas finally. So that was a bit of medical evidence that I could provide to my insurance company to approve my claim for a long-term disability from my job. Because after, I, oh, sorry, I needed to back up. I actually took a fall in January, 2012. I fell down uh, at the river and did something to my SI joint. And I continued to work as a legal assistant for over a year, but I could barely walk. I could barely get up and down because of the SI joint problem. So after a year, that's when I, I, and I thought I had tendonitis, I couldn't type anymore. And I'm just like, oh no, what's going on? So long story short, we thought I had tendonitis. I went off that way initially. And then we, it just got worse and worse. My whole health system kind of broke down. And I guess the stress and everything going on, it just became unbearable. I couldn't do it anymore. So I had to come out of work and then, then we started the process of trying to figure out exactly what was wrong. First, they found like bone and skin anomalies in my wrist, like my ulnar bones are shorter than they're supposed to be. And I have like just some weird stuff, right? So there was all these suspect diagnoses along the way. But anyways, the bipolarness was mixed and I was supported by my psychiatrist who kind of like went down the line with me. And eventually the claims were started for long-term disability, more tests, more tests, it's tons of specialists. I, I probably went to, I don't know, 15 doctors in, in a few years. Like, like you say, it took me four, five, over five years to get to Dr. Herbst. Mm. So that's how that went. So it was a long process and most doctors pretty much dismissed me. And even the imaging processes, they wouldn't take the, the settings for Dr. Herbst's recommendations on the testing. So of course they didn't find any lipomas imaged in the MRIs because they didn't wanna to be told how to do their jobs. So those things are a problem when your uneducated medical professionals are treating you for a rare disease that you suspect you have and you can't prove it because you're a lay person and so that just went on and on and on so I just kept fighting and I would be beaten down and then eventually I would just get back up again like I have my whole life and fight again you know like I've worked all my life so like I've worked and dealt with everything my whole life so it's just been a long fight and then eventually the mental illness problem went away because she gave me co cognitive behavioral therapy and I started realizing I deserve care, I deserve diagnosis, I deserve instead of, oh, no one's going to help me. So wow, that I had to come out of there. Whoa, <laughs> you just said something really important. That's a tipping point for you. It was. It was a pivot point and it shifted because 
somebody believed me, somebody took action, somebody actually stood up for me and told them all to back off because she's going to have her marijuana. It's the only thing she can function with. It's the only way she can function. These other drugs. And then I was finally able to refuse the opioid, opioids, the SSRs they wanted to put me on, antidepressants. And it was just like a flurry of drugs they had. I, I was felt like I was forced because they threatened to take my money if I didn't behave and do what the doctors recommended. Well, if you're not doing what the doctor recommends, well, the doctor doesn't understand that that doesn't work for me. So that was a bit of a fight. So yeah, I've had a lot of conflict with the doctors, but I got through that. And then so eventually I went and seen, okay, the ultrasound creative problem. When she sent me for an ultrasound, they tried to refuse that there was anything in there. So when the ultrasound came back to the psychiatrist, she said, I can see those lumps. I can feel the lumps. Don't tell me there's no lumps in there because it came back, no masses. So I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on. So then she called the radiologist and she said, something going on here. This is ridiculous. So then the radiologist said, well, if you want to send your patient back, I'll do the test myself. So I went back uh, willingly. I've always been open to whatever you guys want to do, check me out. But I went in there and I literally had a fight with the radiologist because she wouldn't look at the imaged lipomas that I brought her to have a look for, to judge when she checks me out, she'll be able to tell, right? I was just offering information. So she just pretty much dismissed that and started doing the ultrasound. And then we, she was doing along this funny arm and she comes along the mountainous range and it's like, I said, okay, so what's all that in there? Well, that's fat. Oh, exactly. That's what we're talking about, a fat disorder here. That's what I need image. So when that image is and the report went back to the psychiatrist, it was a completely different report on the same arms. So it proved the point that if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't find it because they don't generally note lipomas because they're just benign fatty growths for most people. But mine press on nerves and they cause pain. So nerve pain is one of the worst kind of pains you can feel. So that's kind of like got me to my first base type of thing, right? So there's hero number one. And so eventually I actually just went looking for a doctor in Ontario because there was only two listed in Canada that even were listed in the national registry for Durkham's. So I contacted them and the one called me back and said, no, I'm not taking any patients, the one in Ontario. So then he referred me to a specialist in Vancouver who was a dermatologist and a radio, uh, rheumatologist. So I thought, oh, bingo, autoimmune, um, you know, dermatology. These are, this is the specialist I need. Well, for over two years, I fought with him to send me to Dr. Herbst, first of all. I tried to get him to do it right away, but eventually the fight wore down and he couldn't diagnose me. And he what was finally- the What was the resistance? I don't get it. Um, well, he seen me as fibromyalgia with chronic pain issues. Um, again, wanted to throw me in the fibromyalgia bucket and leave me there saying a mental- like type of thing going on because, and he could feel the lumps and he could see the lumps and he saw all the images that I had obtained. And I just don't understand like the second image that happened. So when I fell down at the river and hurt my SI joint um, in 2012, um, that didn't get better. The ankle, I twisted my ankle when I fell and the SI joint and it wouldn't get better. And they finally did a uh, CT scan. And that's actually how the lipoma in my arm was imaged. But she's, the psychiatrist got that image. And she says, well, if we did a CT scan with contrast there and we found it, let's do that in your ankle. So they did it in my ankle and they found a 3.7 centimeter lipoma in the bottom of my foot, right in my rear aspect of my plantar fascia. So imagine walking on a marble. So that's kind of what I do every day. I do this kind of hobble shuffle because my SI joint hurts from SI joint dysfunction. I have a lipoma in my foot and I have big toe arthritis now. <laughs> so, 
And she's smiling. I am. Oh, that's the distraction therapy that I practice, right? So let's talk about that. So okay. how are you distracting yourself? Because that's basically what it is. You're like, okay, I'm not going to focus yeah. on the pain. I'm yeah. going to focus on quilting. Yeah, but I, what it is, is I have to get away from here. Like I have to get out of here. Somehow I have to take it. And the only way I can, you know, I use my marijuana for a couple of puffs and then I, okay, let's, let's see what I can do. It gives me a bit of energy. And I go off and it's like, okay, I have to come out of this body somehow. And I do, I've, I've discovered quilting. I go off and it's like, it literally kills me to do it, but I, I don't care about it while I'm doing it. Do you know what I mean? I can, I can stand there, I can cut things and I can make things and I love it. It just takes me away for hours. I can get lost in it. I go rock hunting and search for agates and pretty rocks and now I do lapidary and I make pretty things out of my pretty rocks and um like even sitting in the chair I have to do something to kind of come away from all of this I'm sick of myself right like I just gotta get out of there so I use it in a mental way to find some peace from it right like if I have joy over here doing this for five minutes and I have to suffer for 10 tonight, I'm doing the five minutes of joy and I'm gonna go for my walks and I'm gonna hobble around and I'm gonna be stared at and looked at as like, what is she, what's the matter with that woman? Doesn't look like nothing's wrong with her, but there she is just, you know, this is kind of how I walk down the road. <laughs> and I got my camera, I go photo shooting, like the shooting of photography was my first escape and it really did help right and it was like oh hey I, I was out there walking for like five hours what was I doing well you paid for it when you came home and sat in the chair but hey I had a great time today right and I got some cool pictures you know won a photo contest got a wrap cover on a magazine might have been a census magazine for a local city but who cares right I think that's so, that is advice. Anyone, whether you have lipedema, anything. Anything. anything, that's great advice because sometimes our greatest battles are between our ears yeah. and we yeah. can get caught in a world of pain, mental yeah. pain, emotional yeah. pain, and choosing those five minutes of joy to take us out of the situation, to stop the momentum of that feeling. Yeah, and I my grandchildren, them. my grandchildren are another one. It's like, you're not gonna care about yourself when your grandchildren are playing and we're going to the park. Yeah, I'm coming, grandma, come on, okay, I'm coming. And I even take my grandchildren rock hunting now. So like, you know, you have to just go and do and have some fun and joy in life. It can't just be all pain and depression because I've also learned something that if you smile and force yourself to smile you cannot be down so just try it <laughs> I love that I actually have been living by that someone told me recently I smile too much me too oh well <laughs> you're always giggling and laughing Kim well what's better you want to see me crying what, and whining alternative you know, right? that's the alternative. So we are running out of time. I okay. want to give you the floor. First of all, people may want to follow you. Are you on social platforms? Well, I've just recently started a YouTube channel because I want to bring awareness and educate and just help us in Canada. Find, we're looking for a doctor to help people with fat disorders in Canada. And we need to get this started in Canada because we need help and we deserve help here. We shouldn't have to fight for five years to go see Dr. Herbst. I mean, I love that doctor so much. She's helped so many of us. You know, she just deserves the kudos here because mm -hmm. she actually cares. And some of these other heroes, like the other thing that I did was adopted a ketogenic lifestyle through mm -hmm. a book called Biodiet. And I've been professionally coached by the authors and for over a year and I lost 38 pounds and six and a half inches off my waist. And now I have my panis removed from my BC children's doctor. 
So there's been a lot of progress and a lot of things have happened to me. So that's what I mean. It's very difficult to say my story in a short period of time because it's such a long story. Well, I think you nailed it. I mean, you did a great job. So how can we find your YouTube channel? Okay, it's called Durkham's Disease and Other Fat Disorders in Canada. And I have a Facebook group called The Same Thing, Durkham's Disease and Other Fat Disorders in Canada, because most of the people that I have in my group are people who have lipedema or lipolymphedema. And I'm gathering people from Canada. I'm trying to find everyone I can with a fat disorder in Canada so we can fight for care with the government because I've actually been fighting in the background, sending letters. I've gone all the way to the Prime Minister of Canada. Nobody will even talk to me. So. Well, you know what? You have proven, Kim, that you eventually get results. Oh, I, I would you. never count you out because you don't <laughs> give up. So in the last piece before we close the interview out, look at the audience. Someone maybe needs some hope or encouragement what would be your message to them today? Call me, find me. My name's Kim and I have a group called Durkham's Disease and Other Fat Disorders in Canada, but FDRS website, Dr. Karen Herb's website, anything to do, just Google Durkham's disease or lipedema. Just Google it, ask Google your question and you'll find this. We're all there. We're just kind of like lurking in the background everywhere. We're, there's lots of us, truly, there's lots of us. So please don't lose hope. It isn't all bad. And you can have joy in your life, because I do. I can tell by that smile. And I want to thank you. I give I, great heart bows to you. Thank you for telling your story and for forging a path in Canada. And I know that it's hard. We'll, we'll look back on this time and say, wow, how far we've come. Yeah. Thank you, Kim Wilson, Hopefully. for your wonderful interview. And thank you for tuning in to this edition of the Lipedema channel. If you know someone that would make a wonderful, inspiring interview to the Lipedema community, please send me an email. I would love the honor of interviewing them. Until then, have a wonderful day and find the joy like Kim did. Yes, thank yes. you, Brenda. Bye.